Hello, everyone. Welcome to Town Meeting TV. I'm sitting here with Dan Higgins. He is the ambassador for Burlington um, for Puerto Cabezas. And he is here to share uh, his experiences and a little bit about the history of our sister city relationship here in Burlington. So thank you for being here with me, Dan. Um, well, first off, my first question is, how did we get a sister city? That's, that's, a, that's an important question. And, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't even aware that there are sister cities. And they've all, they've all have a particular history. It was in 1984 that the war was going on the way the Reagan administration was trying to overthrow the Sandinista government it, with a lot of illegal stuff, too. And, and people around the country were protesting. And in Burlington, they, uh, the people went to City Hall and they said, do we want to have a, a, a more reasonable relationship with people in Nicaragua? And so they asked for a sister city. And I don't really know what went on behind the scenes, but in 1984, Burlington became the sister city with Puerto Cabezas. Mm. And what's interesting about Puerto Cabezas, I can, I can hold, hold this up, is um, it's on the Caribbean coast. Oh, wow. It's, um, it's very different cultures than the, the Managua side. And it wasn't particularly uh, fond of the Sandinista government at that time. So Burlington, uh, very interestingly, had a, a kind of a, 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 a sister city that was not in sync with what people in Burlington thought the revolution was about. Okay. So it's been a very interesting learning curve. It has been a learning curve. Is there any, how would you describe those differences like best, like between not only the Managua side and the Caribbean coast side, but also like how Burlington understood the culture, specifically in Puerto Cabezas? I think, I think, I think for, for people in, in, uh, in Burlington, they knew the revolution they knew the, the aspirations of the Sandinista Revolution, and they were in supportive of it. Uh, when, you, when you get down to Puerto Cabezas, it's an area that has been uh, not a big part of... of it's, it's, it's been colonized. It's, it's the, the British have been down there for, for the 19th century. Uh, you've got a lot of different... Uh, Languages, mosquito is the most common one. Um, uh, Creole, you got Creole people, and so it's a it's it's a culture that has has evolved with different uh, religious beliefs, different food. Um, very very interesting place that's not completely part of Nicaragua. In eighteen, what is it, eighteen um, eighty five or so. Uh, a general, General Cabezas, uh, went in there and 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 took it over as part of Nicaragua. You know, re reassemble it. Uh, he he's not a a, a very um, popular name, and so the town now uh, is has been renamed the indigenous name Bilwi, Bilwi. Which, which was more of the indigenous okay. name. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's that's uh, you know as 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 much as I can know, and it was during the war. It was during the um, Reagan administration was putting a lot of funds into overthrowing the the uh, it was called the Contras, mm -hmm. uh, trying to overthrow the the um, the Sandinista government, and what we were seeing in the press were just pictures of um, the war. And, and, I, and I was, as, a, as someone in, in Burlington, was interested in what, what's the place really like, uh, aside from all the, the wall, the war. So would you say that that's kind of where you started to get involved in the sister city side of this relationship? Or was it after we had formally made it a sister city? Or was it? It was, it was formerly a sister city. Burlington was very involved in, in a boat, a peace boat that went down there. Richard Kemp was on that boat. 
uh, taking supplies uh, to Puerto Cabezas because uh, people were being, you know, they were out of their homes. It was, it was that kind of thing. And I, I, um, my first, my first um, attempt at trying to understand the place was, and I, and I do photography, and they're all posed, mm -hmm. and I, and so it was like, I was doing things like, um, here's the city hall in Burlington, oh. and here's the city hall in, mm -hmm. in Port. And you see Burmese in there. It was, like, it was that period of, of. Um, Here's a diner that was very popular in Burlington. It's the um, Oasis Biner, Diner. There's a taco place down there now. And then this was the, them. And the, the, so they're all posing with what they do. Um, like really showing those similarities between. Trying to. And, the, and, and, and I went down, and this, this happened a, a, a different year. This is the nurses. And I, the first year I went down there, um, I, people were kind of hesitant and showing. I went back the next year and did a show, and then nurses came up and they said, "We're part of, we're part of this community," and so then I had to come up to the hospital here and find the women that do laundry uh, in the hospital. This, by the way, was sent down during the material aid shipment. The washing machine from Burlington. I think it's a dryer. Maybe it's a washing machine. <laughs> oh. So, so it, it kind of it kind of expanded. Um, I did school kids, t t taxi drivers, ha taxi drivers everywhere. Uh, basically, uh, are kind of independent. Right? They don't like any kind of government telling them what to do. <laughs> and um, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if you knew this woman. This was the woman in Burlington that she was called the hot dog lady. Oh no. And so I did the, the one of Burlington, and then I found her counterpart down there. So a lot of what my um, interest in the sister city has been taking people from Burlington and introducing them to their counterparts. In fact, uh, like this, is a, this is a counterpart that would, uh, would appeal to you because it's people doing public access television. Oh, that's amazing. So, if, if I can talk you into coming down there, Travis, uh, these are the people you can you could become. Uh, let's see. Well, it's in here anyway. There they are. <laughs> That's amazing. So they they do a, they do a good job, and we trained them. CCTV. Um, in the year 2000, there was no cable, there was no TV, there were radio stations that were very big, and then cable came in and there was nothing local, and we went down there with um, five little cameras, CCTV gave us some outdated VHS editing equipment, and we did a, a, um, a course there for three months and trained 18 people how to use, how to document what they thought was important about the, about the area. That's amazing. <laughs> That's it, amazing. It, it was. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of them are now doing the TV stuff. You know, a lot of them are, uh, some of the people that are sending up videos are part of that. What do you feel like you've learned from the folks that are doing? Um, that are going and recording their videos about their community, much like how we do it here. What do you feel like? Do you feel like it's similar in a lot of ways, or do you feel like there's you know, really what, glaring differences? What was very different um, was people hadn't seen television. Mm. And so there weren't, you know, once you've seen enough television, you, you, you kind of make your stuff fit it. Yeah. And there were shots, uh, there were beautiful shots that that were like um, one guy. We he he wanted to take. They, we had some little cameras, mm -hmm. and he went up to a village, and he came back with seven-minute-long sequences. Oh, awesome. You know, none of that. Yeah. And it would be great. It would be like uh, he'd he'd see a girl way off in the, at a village walking across the field, and just on there. And it took took her five minutes to get 
and then she'd stop and talk to someone, and then she'd hey, follow her up on the porch. And, and so it was, it was very interesting to see how much of um, those of us that had seen television were, were informed by it. And it, that's become much more now. I mean, now with her, you know, it, yeah. they have a news band, and he, you know, they, they had a big issue about whether he should wear a tie or not. Oh, yeah, so now, now that they've seen more and more television and media, it's just been... You think that people went through, they've seen a lot of television and media, they eventually start to try to emulate it. But like before that, it's just when they get... Well, yeah, and, they, and they hadn't seen television. Um, you know, this was a really remote part of the country. Mm -hmm. Cable came in in uh, 1986, I think. And, and then they were, they were watching uh, Brazilian um, soap operas, which are pretty interesting, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing local. So, you know, sometime it would be really fun to show some of the stuff um, that, that, that was done in the year 2000 with these people. And, and there, was a, there was a church that sent someone Churches are very big there, Moravian Church, um, the uh, Con Consejo de Ancianos, which is an a indigenous government system, sent a really interesting guy. He's the guy that went up to villages and phone, oh, filmed. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. Oh, wow. Wow, it sounds, it sounds amazing. Um, and I will say, cause, because we're trying to get people in Burlington to be aware of this thing, it's, it's been, um, in, in the 80s, p people in Burlington were, were um, collecting material goods. For this. It was in the news all the time. In the 90s, Burlington ran a, um, a tree nursery for after the war, you know, uh, fruit trees. Um, pr pretty much in, in the year 2000, I got interested in video and public access, mm -hmm. you know, getting that. And um, it's always been, it's always had the flavor of the people that are involved. And so what we're trying to do now is get people to be aware of this connection. And I think it's one of the big resources of Burlington to have this, you go down there and they say, oh, Burlington. I mean, you're, you're home. Yeah. You're home. That's amazing. Um, how does someone get involved with um, is, it, is it something you have to take like personal responsibility and just go to Puerto Cabezas and figure it out or is it is well, there more of a system? We have a board. The city of Burlington puts $2,000 a year into it. Um, it does it for its other sister cities too. Um, we have a board. We, for a while, were meeting every month. We haven't been since COVID. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, the, the, what, we're, what we're doing now, I, I am hoping to, to take a, dele, delegation, a dele, delegation down in, in um, probably February. February, March is a good time to get out of Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people can, there is a website, www.uvm.edu uh, yeah, uvm slash sister city, that, that they, can, they, can, um, they can reach us. Um, we're looking for someone to redo the red, the, the, the uh, website. It's been, I did it a long time ago and I, I don't, it doesn't even. A lot's know. changed. <laughs> Technology has, has changed. And so what I'm trying to do now, uh, to, to make Burlington aware of this incredible place is there are people down there that are shooting video with their cell phones, mm -hmm. with their smartphones. And great stuff. And um, I'm, I've got a guy now that is uh, trying to do, do an interview with the mayor down there. There's a new mayor. And um, just, keep, just keep the uh, connection going. Yeah, and um, for you personally, what do you, feel, like, what do you feel like the future of this relationship could be? Or... What I think, are some like personal goals yeah, as well? No, I think it's up to who gets involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always been connecting people. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and the connections are, are, are the most important thing. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I think we'll find some, I'm, I'm counting on CCTV to, to reach out and get some interest. Yeah. <laughs> um, and do you think there, 
Well, are there other sister cities? There are. There, there was after, after this sister city, Burlington um, had one in Yaroslavl in Russia, which I think with the Ukraine war going on, the city is no longer putting money into it, but, but it, it's, people are still going. And there's one in, um, it's a three-part one, in Palestine, Israel, and Burlington, which is a very interesting one. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the problems that they have connecting uh, with, with the situation is, is uh, you can imagine. Yeah. I, lots of tiptoeing <laughs> of, on lines, probably. But there was a period in the 80s. Peter Clavel, when he was the mayor, he, he supported all these things, really believed that citizen diplomacy was, was effective, that getting citizens connecting was, was the way to go. And that was the, the idea of the sister cities. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's certainly worked in, it's been, what, 1984? How many years is that? About... 30 some years. Mm -hmm. I think actually it's the same year that CCDV was started, 1984. Yeah, so that's 39 years, almost 40. <laughs> there we go. Celebrating our 40th anniversary next year, everyone. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very uh, interesting time in Burlington. Um, a lot of things were happening. Yeah, and um, do you think, do you think, would you want Burlington to step up more for um, their sister city relationship, or do you think it it just needs to morph and see where like regain citizen interest again to well, see where the, to take it? There there were times when the mayors were were quote when on that official level there was more. Peter, the, the mayor from um, from Puerto Cabezas, and Peter were very close, and he he came here or they went. Peter has been down there four times. You know Peter Clavel? Mm -hmm. I've met him a few times. He's, he's, a, he's a very strong, he's on the board oh, of the Sister awesome. City. Very uh, strong supporter. Um, but on the official level, I don't think it's a top priority anymore for either place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Miro is, I mean, he's, he's the mayor now, but I don't think he's out beating the bushes to get the, um, sister city connection going, um, which some of the mayors did. So there have been times when it was more official. Okay. I would say that the most important connections right now are the, are the connections that people have made. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, there, there are a lot of people that are sending videos now, which is great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say? Um, no, I just, I just I think it's time to, um, to let Burlington, you know, and I don't know how many people watch television anymore, <laughs> um, th that there is a sister city and that there, is a, there are opportunities. There have been great things with musicians. I always... Um, I, this is a this is a poet, one of the one of the mosquito poets. Oh wow! Um, All the books, <laughs> all the books. I love it. Uh, there's there are. Oh, it's just well. This is a this is a band. You know, one of the um, themes that you run into is called autonomy. Mm -hmm. And this at different times that coast has been autonomous. It's been its own thing. It's been a British protectorate. Uh, it's part of Nicaragua now, but it has, but it's autonomous, mm -hmm. whatever that means. And you can ask a hundred people. Yeah, and they'll all uh, give you a different answer. They'll give you a different answer, but it's, but it's a, it's a distinctly, it's a separate region. Um, this is a couple of um, uh, musicians who came to on the on this side, no, on this side, on this side. <laughs> Backwards, uh, who came to, who came to Vermont, and then they played. One of them had never been out of Nicaragua. They they got they got here. Uh, they came on um, People's Express. Somebody took them down to uh, one of the stores to get a new shirt. 
and then they appeared at the uh, Ben and Jerry International Music Festival with Pete Seeger. <laughs> so I mean, there've been there've been highlights. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, along the way. Um, this is food. I'll just say something about about the food. There's there's a thing called rondon, which is means run down, but it's a it's a stew, and then then the uh, vigoron is a, she's a lady that's been selling it on the street for for years, and but it's it's, it's a. I I think uh, uh, I, it's it's a it's a it's not like the rest of Nicaragua, mm. and there there has been. An isolation you used to have to. It took about eighteen hours to get from from Nagua. There was a ferry boat, you know. You get on the ferry, pull the rope, and it it was always flooded. And uh, last October, they put a highway in with a bridge that oh, wow. has totally changed the, the landscape of the city. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they're positive and I'm sure they're negative effects, but all of a sudden getting from Managua to that part of the, co to the coast is much easier. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good for tourism, I guess, but it's also bad for tourism. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, thank you so much for sitting down with me and kind of giving me a fuller picture of sister cities, the history of it, and also the history of Puerto Cabezas. Um, thanks for watching. Um, this has been Tommy and TV. I'm Travis, here with Dan. Um, thank y'all. <laughs>